Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. I have a little prediction to make here and the prediction is as follows. Pretty soon we're going to find out that the uh, British are operating in the Black Sea big time. And uh, why do I think that? Because I think that's a given. First, it was a general statement, but I think now more and more I think there's not a general statement, it's really a particular statement. And why do I say that? Um, <clears throat> first, because I know that uh, Great Britain is a big, or used to be a big, great, fantastic uh, uh, maritime power, and it still is. And that's the first one, the that's the general rule. Second, uh, Great Britain is involved in uh, Ukraine, big time. Um, you say how? We'll find out later. But as of now, I, I'm pretty sure they are directly involved. Now, number three. Number three is the la latest attack on Sevastopol uh, this morning, actually, at 4 o'clock a.m. by six drones. Uh, air drones and, uh, I think, uh, maritime uh, drones. And the Russians claim that was organized with the support of UK Navy um, technicians or experts. All right. Well, I have no doubt. Now, if you got trained by those guys, where do you think those guys might be? In London? <laughs> no, they're in the territory. Now, I know that's a weasel country over there, among others, called uh, <clears throat> Romania. And I know Romania is the whore of the United States and everybody else from that side. And it would open its legs, uh, spread its legs, let's put it this way, uh, to these guys uh, actually reflect reflexively will be open and uh, like that, ready to whatever, you know what I mean. In this case, I guarantee you that in the Black Sea port of Constanza and Mihail Kogelnichanu base and other areas over there, bases, there are not only uh, American uh, ships, there are also, and uh, personnel, there are also French as far as I know, and I know that, and I know that, and Americans, and they're British, and who knows who else. So those guys operate that's at least one point where they operate from. Now, they tell us here that the Russians, uh, they have uh, this many m missiles, this many caliber, this many submarines and uh, uh, warships in the Black Sea, in the Sea of Azov, and in the Mediterranean. Let's see what are they capable of doing and if they're going to do anything about things. So this article comes from Ukraine Forum. It's from today, the 29th of October, 2022. Four Russian missile carriers remain combat ready in Black Sea. Four Russian missile carriers with a total volley of 32 caliber type cruise missiles are remaining combat ready in the Black Sea. The relevant statement was made by a naval forces, by the naval forces of the armed forces of Ukraine. And I'm quoting, for four enemy missile carriers with a total volley, volley of 32 caliber type cruise missiles are remaining on combat duty in the Black Sea, the report says. According to Ukrainian naval forces, the enemy continues to control maritime communications in the Sea of Azov, keeping up the three warships and boats combat ready. So that's four with three, right? Seven. In the Mediterranean Sea, there are 13 Russian warships, that makes a total of 20, including five caliber type cruise missiles carriers. Over the past day, in the interest of the Russian Federation, passage through the Kersh Yenikale Canal has been carried out as follows. 34 vessels have sailed into the Sea of Azov, including 14 vessels from the Bosphorus Strait. 37 vessels have sailed into the Black Sea and 11 of them have gone towards the Bosphorus Strait. There's more coming in. Russia continues to violate the International Convention of the Safety of Life at Sea. I suggest Russia should don't give a fuck about it. But that's my suggestion. Why? You can't hold a deal with those guys. That's my advice. And not only my advice, that's also uh, Stefan the Great's the great advice in what 1502 or 1501 whenever he died one of those dates anyway that's a uh, old uh, Romanian slash Moldovan king who fought the 
Polish invaders and not only. Okay, so uh, Russia continues to violate international convention. You should keep doing that because they will violate yours at any moment in any kind of convention. Let me tell you about Stefan the Great. So Stefan the Great for the Turks, invading Turks the, and invading uh, Poles who were very peaceful, but he wanted to kill everyone around them, including the Russians. And they got to Moscow one time with the help of Lithuanians, right? And then um, they, um, the, he fought the Tatars, he fought er, all the invaders because he was a peaceful guy, he never invaded anyone. Only one time he went in retaliation to those guys, or maybe, I don't know, maybe attacked the Poles as well, and almost reached uh, Krakow. And those guys said, fuck, let's build walls. So if you go right now to Krakow and see those beautiful walls, or some of them were built because they were afraid this guy's gonna come over and fuck them up. Anyway, he didn't. So, good job, Poland. So, move on. This guy, went before he died, he dictated or wrote a testament, a will, or at least it's verbally uh, mentioned. And he says, so he fought, let's say, about 90% against or 80% against the Turks, 15% uh, against the Poles. Oh, I forgot, he fought about the Hungarians too. My bad. Hungarians, everybody around, and then the Tatars and all that. Now, when he died, you would be expected, before he died, when he dictated or wrote that testament, you would expect him to say, Oh my God, those Turks always wanted my land. I fought with them, I won, I lost, I all that. But he didn't say that. You know what he said? He said towards his uh, uh, possible successors or future generations. If you are about to make alliances, don't make alliances with the West. In this case was Hungary, was Poland and uh, the, the Pope, the Catholic Church, that's what he meant, the West that side. He said, do not make treaties and alliances with those guys. You, he said, you will trust more the Turk than the Western uh, world. That's what he said. When I first read that, I was very much inclined towards the West. I didn't know uh, too much at that time when I first read this kind of thing. I said, well, how in the hell this guy would say that? I mean, look at the Western countries, look at democracy, look at freedom, look at capitalism. That's beautiful. That's when I was used to live in Romania and I was a, I don't know, um, high school guy, high school uh, uh, student. And until I started reading, started reading about things and learning and paying attention and realized that things are not really like that. So then when I read again, or I remembered the Stephen the Great Testament, I was thinking, hmm, okay, I don't know if the Turks are really, uh, they're not angels, but for that guy who had about 50 years, 50 years, I think he reigned or something like that, a lot of, for those years, remember, it was in the 1400s, uh, in the 1400s to the early 15th, I think it died in 1501, 1502, I can't remember exactly. My bad, don't whip me, mother Romanians, don't kill me because I don't know Stefan Celmarek and I was not scoot. I don't know. Anyway, I can check, but I'm not going to be a weasel. Anyway, so I was surprised, right now I'm not, because his, through his direct experience, not what we're t t told right now, he figured out that those guys probably kept their uh, uh, word more than the other ones. Um, and uh, that, that's his experience. It's like, for instance, my experience when I've been, I came here to the United States and I've been told that, hey, those guys are good, those guys are good. Forget those, those stereotypes. Well, I lived my life here for some time and I realized that uh, what these guys are telling me is really different of what I'm experiencing. So kind of like Stefan the Great. You're, you're told that the West is that one, and actually, now you're told, actually, that guy would say the other ones. The same, you're told here that everybody and the one, and you, through direct experience, you realize, hmm, wait a second, my direct experience contradicts those. Why should I say that those are right and I'm wrong? I mean, no, no. My direct experience, I had 9 to 1 proof, is the way I experience, and those guys tell me, no, it's actually the other way around. No, it's not. Why should I believe you? Okay, so uh, going back to this, they have this capability in the Black Sea. The Russians just pulled out of that grain agreement with Ukraine. That's why I also made this, uh, you know, conversation about treaties uh, because uh, and understandings. What happened? 
The Russian fleet in Sevastopol, Crimea, was hit by 16 drones, Ukrainian-led drones, trained and with the support of UK Navy uh, experts or whatever, technicians. So, where was that deal with the grains? You don't attack my things and I'm gonna be over there. On the other hand, you say, well, but you can attack me. I don't know, it was an agreement. And now the Russians said, you know, we can provide safety for the uh, pa free passing and safe passage of those grain uh, ships that pick up grain from Ukraine. So Ukraine can make a big fucking profit and the rest of the world is fed. Now, they said, we're out. And another treaty, that was great. I'm not saying <laughs> the Russians are the victims here. I'm kind of saying that, but they are guilty as well. Don't get me wrong. If I would be to put, if I would, and the only guilt that I think I can look on the Russians on this matter is this. You are using your fleet in the Black Sea to hit Ukrainian uh, territory. So now you got hit and you're crying and you get out and say, well, no, 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 you're not supposed to hit at me because I'm providing safety passage. Well, you kind of like weasel move, you know what I mean? I mean, you can't ask for, I'm, uh, I'm protected from being hit by you guys, but you're not protected from me hitting you because I'm protected because I'm taking care of the corridor. No, no, I don't think that's right. Do you think so? I don't think so. So it, I think it was fair game to be fucked up in Sevastopol by those guys. Uh, those guys after war, after all, it's war. The only thing that I think is bad is the Brits. That's not a thing. Because they were involved, according to the Russians. And if it's according to the Russians, they believe that. So you can say, well, it was not us. It doesn't really matter. If those guys believe it was you, they're going to retaliate against you. You can deny how much you want. They're, those guys, in their heart and their brains and their genes, they will hit you because they say it was you. The same with the Nord Stream 2 pipelines. They just came this morning. The Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation and said it was the Brits, the your Royal Navy, who blew up the uh, pipelines. Really? I made a video on that on that this morning. You can say no, it was not us. It doesn't matter. Those guys put it down. It was you. So that means we're gonna, if we can, and they can. It's just a matter of decision. That's all it is. A matter of decision, not capability. The capability is there. And besides, the problem with Great Britain, I have to say, or, is that they're an, a small island. Not moving island, but it's a static, fixed target. Very small. You don't have to hit it. You have to hit around it. And you're going to make some big waves, if you know what I mean. I'm sorry for you, my friends, but we'll see what's going on, okay? Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth, and be just.